Do you believe a crisis exists in Sudan? Yeah, definitely. There is definitely a crisis but there. Why are you out here today yeah. when your leaders back home yeah. have called yeah. for, yeah. for negotiations and for these protests to cease? Yeah. I, I want to tell you something. Yeah, tell me something. Yeah. You need to know, you need to know for you, uh, you cannot, cannot, like, someone translate in Arabic. Like, you're going to get more views in Sudan. Do you think a crisis is currently taking place in Sudan? Yes. Describe the crisis to me. How did you feel when you discovered that your brothers and sisters had been killed and their bodies chucked in the Nile like rubbish? Are you happy about what's happening in Sudan? Um, I'm in the middle. You're in the middle? So yes and no. I just want to say a small message to all the girls out there who've been raped, the girls and the boys. I want to say... Subscribe, yeah. comment and hit the thumbs. Window Daniel from Street Cam documentary coming to you live and direct from outside of the Embassy of Sudan here in London, where the people of Sudan are outside this great embassy campaigning yet again in regards to injustices that they are seeing in their own country but the unique thing about what is happening today is that a deal has been reached in Sudan however the people here are not happy they believe a crisis is still taking place in Sudan what in an ideal world what would be your expectation or your hope for justice and to you what would be the finest justice for the people of Sudan Forget. If you like Street Cam, you need to subscribe to the channel. And if you subscribe, give me the thumbs up and make your comments. But if you do subscribe, it's important that you switch on your personalized notification button because when you switch on your personalized notification bell, ding, 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 ding. That personalized notification bell will let you know exactly when an update has been made. Come from today? Well, I live in Belfast, but I'm Sudanese. You live in Belfast? Yeah. So you have come all the way from Belfast just yeah. for today? Yeah. Why was you motivated to come here today? Because I want to see a change in Sudan, so we have to work towards that. So why is that important for you? Because Sudan is my country, like it's my first home, even though I've lived here for so long. I'm Sudanese, so it's my motherland. I have to go back there and live there and die there, basically.
Do you believe a crisis exists in Sudan? Yeah, definitely. There is definitely a crisis there. Like, why is why are we protesting and trying to raise awareness and all of that if there's no crisis? But give me more of an insight into what you believe to be the crisis. Basically, what I think the crisis is is basically the government and. I just think it's just very corrupt and it's not just Sudan but most African countries. Uh-huh. I feel like the government is very selfish and uh-huh. they, they're just very to themselves. They do what's best for them. A deal has been reached in Sudan yeah. between the military and the civilians. Yeah. How can there be a crisis if a deal's been reached? Well. The, what we're worried about right now, this deal has been reached, but are they, are they going to work up towards a better Sudan, you know? Like, the deal is there and everything, but is everything going to go the way it should be? And those first 18 months that the military is going to, like, take in charge, what are they going to do? We've agreed to the deal, they can do whatever they want, and we can't say no to it. So I feel like... That, that's, the, that's the issue right now. As a young lady, are you proud of what you're seeing happening in Sudan, specifically to do with what women have been doing in leading the uprising? Very, very are much. Are we smiling for, mate? Very, very huh? much, because the women there, they're proper kandakat. Like, they're, they're so empowering. Uh-huh. And just looking at them and seeing everything that they're doing just brings so much joy to every single young Sudanese woman out there. Like, I'm going to grow up and be those type of women. That's, that's the people that I look up to. They're my idols, you know? So they're your idols, yeah? But you just mentioned just now about Kandaka. Yes. I'm from Barbados. Yeah. I'm not from Sudan. What's a Kandaka? A Kandaka is basically... A woman that... But carry on smiling when you tell me. <laughs> she's basically a woman that stands up for her country. Uh-huh. She's not afraid. Like, she, she stands up for what's right. So you're a warrior. Country. You're a warrior. Yes, basically. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, I, I want to tell you something. Yeah, tell me something. Yeah. You need, you know, you know what for you, uh, your canal, canal, like someone translating in Arabic. Like you're going to get more views in Sudan. Can I comment? Yeah. I fully agree with you. So I want you to tell people to step forward to translate what I do into Arabic and we can promote the Sudanese community even more. I'm so, gonna, arts people. I'm going to tell, tell them in Arabic, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, man, Wallahi al-Azim, Azul da' shagal shagul ajib. Yani, fi, fi, fi da' masawr al-Sudanese. Azul da' min awal yom, lagayt akhir yom, lagayt al-layla. Azul da' kul yom da' yana hina, ويتعبان معانا وبتنزل لنا فيديوهات وبتجيب معانا ومش السودان وكان في الكاف في الاعتصام في السودان فالعايزين منكم انتو اي واحد يعني بيقدر يعمل ترانزيت للفيديوهات دي عشان الزول ده يقدر ياخد ناس يشوفوا الفيديوهات دي اكتر في السودان ويعرف الحاصل شنو فاي زول عنده خبرة يعني في الترجع بتاعت الفيديوهات دي حاول يساعد الزول ده عشان يحصل اكتر فيوهات اكتر او يتواصل معه بالضبط yeah. And I fully agree with you. I know you do. <laughs> Why are you out here today when yeah. your leaders back home yeah. have called for, for, negotiation. for negotiations and for these protests to cease? We're still standing behind them. We still trust them. But we don't trust TMC. We don't trust military. We, because of all of what's happening in Damascus last 3rd of June and the things that are happening during all times of our revolution since December 2018 
and they still just tricking and cheating our people. They still sending messages not clear. I mean by not clear, that means uh, there's something behind. And uh, that's why we're still here to protect our revolution. Are you happy about what's happening in Sudan? Um, I'm in the middle. You're in the middle? So yes and no. I'm happy because um, people in London and all over the world are, are helping um, the protesters and protesting. They're protesting in, not in their country, but in the country that they're living in because they know that they're not going to hurt, they're not going to get hurt. Why do you know so much about what is happening in Sudan and why are you in the middle? I'm in the middle because um, the bad thing is that um, all the leaders have been um, not have been telling lies um, on news and everything like that and um, the Janjaweed um, are killing protesters that are chanting for human rights. I've been asked, how come so many young people know the poems and the poetry and the songs? How comes you know the songs and the poetry so well? So some people in Sudan in different countries, sometimes they make it up because, like, they really, really like their country and they don't like what's going on. But... Um, I sometimes friends from protesting they come and send me stuff to say because um, since the first time I came to protest um, everyone wanted me to do it and other people but um, I didn't know that much so people would send me stuff to say So how old are you? I'm nine You're nine years old so isn't it scary for you to be in front of thousands and thousands of people singing? It depends how much people it is. And um, at the start, I do get scared. And my legs start, and my ha legs and my heart, and my hands start shivering. And I have goosebumps. But um, then, when I get used to it, when um, in my head I think it's not for me, it's not for the other people, it's for my country. Uh, are you going to give me a little poem now? Okay. Go on. Um. Bukhara Shemis يدينا تبقى سوا يا روعة العمال داخلين على المصنع ماشيين في طريق قدام خطوات مترجع. Excellent. Thank you very much. I can see you're doing an excellent job. But how do you go about raising awareness in a school? What's that process? Okay, so the process was first to speak to the head teacher and uh, gain permission from him to be able to speak to others. How difficult was that? It wasn't that difficult. My head teacher is really like level-headed and he's really understanding what's happening. So it was really easy. So what's his name? Big him up. What's his um, name? Mr. Johnson and Dr. Tomlinson. Hey, Mr. Johnson. Hey. That's the that's the, one of the teachers. And Dr. Tomlinson, uh -huh. her teacher, that's the one uh -huh. that helped us. So yeah. So I had to, he asked me to come forward with a plan of what I wanted to do for Sudan. Uh -huh. And what was difficult was um, getting people that were dedicated to the cause and not to. That makes sense, not to, not for image, but to, that I actually did begin to, because that was the difficult part. Yeah. The youth has played an important role in the Sudanese uprising. Are you proud of what has occurred so far? Of course, I'm uh, very happy and all of people of Sudanese are happy because what's been happening together, what's happening now, uh, bringing people together, 
uh, making the people know their rights. Um, we, we should, of course, we should uh, talk about that as we come in here. Yeah. A deal was brokered last week. Yeah. Over Sudan. Are you happy with the deal? No, I'm not happy because there are many of dead, and as you can see in the news, many people have been dead and being thrown at the Nile River. Of course, the situation currently now is not safe for both sides. Yeah. How did you feel when you discovered that your brothers and sisters had been killed and their bodies chucked in the Nile like rubbish? It's, it's horrific, horrific for us because we are one people, so we need to talk for the rights. Yeah. Final question. Yes. Do you think a crisis still exists within Sudan? Uh, right now, the crisis is not like before because there is a conference, not conference, the, the positive side of the government has seen being sit together in one table to discuss that, but till now there's no, I don't know, there's no solution like what they said in the news. So, it's still the situation is not safe. It's not as what we want. Why was it important for you to be here today? So, I mean, this is a march that's kind of in remembrance of like the martyrs and the people that died. So even though we've got Got a, even though we've got a deal right now, it's kind of important to just come out and just kind of show remembrance for the people that died so that we could get that deal and the people that died so that we could kind of be where we are right now. A deal was struck in Sudan yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Are you happy with the deal? I mean, insofar as it... I wouldn't necessarily say I'm that happy with it. I wouldn't say I know necessarily the ins and outs of it and the fact that the TMC are still kind of dictating a lot of things. And I think that that's something that most of the Sydney people are still a bit annoyed about but it kind of seems like it's not there there isn't much you know it's it's time to kind of go forward with that do you think a crisis still exists within sudan um i mean yeah i do think so i think as long as the military and the people the, the tmc are have power i think that power's going to that crisis is going to exist because i think they are sort of the they are the remnants of the Kazan. So, yeah. You can't come this. 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 As you know, a deal was reached in Sudan a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Are you happy? Um, I can't say that I'm happy. I'm still worried. But I don't know. Like, time will tell. What are you worried about? Because you can never trust the TMC camp. You can never uh, trust the TMC, the transitional military camp. You can never trust them. You never know what they're going to do. Yeah, but what gives you the impression you can't trust TMC? What do you think, so? You've seen what they did on June 3rd, 30th, uh, even even the last million march, not not today, the one that was, uh, it was the 30th of June, uh -huh. they killed they kill a lot of people, a lot of injured, over 180 people were injured, a lot of people were killed, that they've been killing people, like you can never trust them, they've been saying that they're with us, like they're part of the revolution, they've been, they've been trying to convince us that yeah, they're part of the revolution, they've been killing us at the same time, so you can never trust them. Do you think there is still a crisis in Sudan? Yeah, definitely. Like we've, we have a long way to go, still. But how long are you willing to wait? As long as it takes. And how long is that? Like, this is a hard question. Like that's why I've asked it. I'm not, I'm not going to ask you easy questions, am I? We're, we're not gonna stop. We're like, we're not gonna stop. We're not gonna stop until like, we get 100% a civilian government and until the people are heard, and, and until the TMC is held accountable about what they've done to the people. <laughs>
why do you think it has taken the youth, the young people in Sudan, to start raising awareness and to start bringing things forward, agitating, raising awareness through social media, and that led to the uprising? Why has it taken young people to do that? Because young people is the, the new generation and they clearly know that exactly what will be happen if they have a freedom in a country and then they got the thing that they looking forward to. Like if we say that the old people should have to do this, um, to, I'm afraid to say that in Sudan a lot of uh, old people they don't really understand the the life of the lifestyle going on right now so the youngest they know the lifestyle and they know how to know the right from the wrong and they know that if they just get in the chance in order to be leader of the country Sudan will be one of the country that everyone dream on and everyone have to live equal and everyone have the freedom of getting what he looking for but tell me how will a youngster know the difference between right and wrong? Um, clearly they are education, they are educated, they mm. all went to school, they, they all educate, they know a lot of um, the thing that's going in Sudan is all wrong and you know the previous government have been 30 years trying to promise that they do things in Sudan, they change Sudan for a bear but they don't really done it. So after the education, the young people that realize that all what the previous government is saying is lying and they don't really like that, so they need change. So, yesterday you told me that we don't get the chance to talk. I just want to say a small message to all the girls out there who have been raped, the girls and the boys. I want to say you are strong, you are beautiful, you are brave and I'm proud of you and with you all the way. So tell me, what are you playing here, youngsters? Some revolution songs, isn't it? Some revolution songs? Yes. Do you believe, even though a deal has been struck in Sudan, a crisis still exists? Well, uh, about it, the... The first six months, as I said, from from the sign is going to be to declare peace in this whole country. But the TMC now they they neglecting in nominating the five the, the five nominees because obviously Hamitia and Burhan and they are there and Kabasha and of the none of, none of the Sudanese won them. So I don't know they they still lacking. They didn't approve the sign signature yet. So. Until like, they get that happen, we can't guarantee anything. We don't trust them, and we we'll, we'll never trust them. They, they betrayed us one and twice and three times, and they lost our trust. So until we see that signature being there, until we see the civilian, the least civilian government come up to life, then that's when we'll be like, yeah, this is this is what we we were out from out day one to. Achieve. But you know something? You answer questions like Boris Johnson. Guy, I said to you, is a crisis in Sudan and you give me some opposite answer. Let me ask you the question again. Is there a crisis in Sudan? There's a crisis from Sudan from 2003 to 1995. Crises are there, but hopefully once we get it done, once we get our civilian government, this is when the end of all crises, all civil war, all war, crim well, war criminals come to the end. So, yes, this is it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna stop. Eventually, it's gonna stop. This is what we are for. We want all this to stop. And we want to build our country. We want to see our country out there, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> do you know something? Wow. My man behind you there is hiding. <laughs> he knows he's next. So step forward. Hey, listen, man. You always put me first, front line, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know so, line so line. tell me why <laughs> the women have led the way in Sudan and in Great Britain in regards to raising awareness. Uh, we're the ones with the voices. We're the most passionate. We're deeply affected by this. So, uh, women, are, we're using our voices because people will listen. Are you saying the men 
have lost their voices and their passions? No, they haven't, but it comes from a different place when it comes from a woman. It's from a place of compassion. It's a more uh, heart-centered place. And men, I think, lead more with um, different emotions, different things. But I feel like women can really connect us to what the core of this is, and that's being united yeah. and keeping us humble. Last question. Do you think there is still a crisis in Sudan? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, until there's real justice and real freedom, you know, we're going to have to keep fighting these problems. So, I mean, we're making progress and things are moving in a good direction, but ultimately, until we get our control, we're not there yet. So this is Street Cam coming to you live and direct from the outside of the Embassy of Sudan where this week our guest reporter, our guest interviewer is going to be... What's your name, sir? Ahmed Tagrun. So I'm now going to hand over to you and it's down to you to interview whoever you want. I haven't interviewed anyone before, so, so this is your be first, first time? Yeah. First time with me interviewing anybody. So, uh, who, who at least I'm behind this camera this time. So, you know, come for the same. So, what's your Hi. name? Hi. Hi. Yeah. I'm Sab Sabah. Sabah in Arabic. Sabah. So, Sabah, uh, tell me how how the this last six months or the, the experience been for you for the protest? I think the best way I can describe it is that it's been an emotional roller coaster. I think for me, being someone who is from the diaspora, located in London, born and raised London, but having Sudanese heritage, it's very sad to see streets and roads that were once, you know, full of joy and happiness and weddings is now a war-torn city. Um, I just visited now in April, so since that kind of December when this all started, we it was a bit hit and miss of whether we should go we sh should should we shouldn't we and obviously of course motherland we have to go so i went in april and i was part of the first um, uprising on the 6th of april so when we actually threw off ramon and bashir and i think for someone like myself you know hearing hearing gunshots in the middle of the night and being exposed to i think conditions like that was very i don't want to use the word traumatic because again i was just there for a minute a minute or two compared to what other people are suffering from but yeah, I think for me it's a lot of empathy, it's a lot of sadness to see, you know, mothers have lost sons, daughters, you know, for something that has only taken 35 years for us to overcome. So, yeah, emotional roller coaster is the way I can describe it best. Would you like to interview him now? Uh, yeah. Aye, go girl, go girl. Aye. Oh, okay. See, that's street cam on the street. Street cam, So street it's cam, your turn, cam. it's your turn. Hi. Hi everyone, today I'm joined by the lovely... Would you like to state your name for the camera? Ahmed Hamid Takun. Um, and we'll be discussing the major revolution that's happening in Sudan now, a uh, place nearest and dearest to both of our hearts. So, Ahmed, how do you feel about everything that's happening now with the revolution and where we stand? Um, at the meantime, it's, for me personally, um, it's quite unclear uh, of... of, of Decision, but there's hope there. There's a hope. There's a little light end of the tunnel. Uh, hopefully, with 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 the with the military council agreeing to sign off to a civilian uh, government, that, that that's the first step towards a new Sudan. So, hopefully, this 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 three years or four years of of, of, of transaction for of a civil government that. We're trying to, I hope for it, the achievement of it is to get justice for the people who died and uh, move the country forward, yeah. lock, lock down corruption totally. So these, these are the hope or my hope for, for or, or my expectation from this civil government and the current, and the current moment. I'm not expecting them to be... To, to build Sudan between the day and night to, to come as Dubai or mm -hmm. I just want the fundamental thing for a normal human citizen it's a citizen right for me to live in peace and to be in peace for everyone to do their job so 
very positive, very positive because we fall through the process for over six months to get rid of a regime that lasted for 30 years. Now that this regime has, has gone, now it's, it's a matter of time clearing their, their traces or the shadows that they left behind. So, yeah, very positive. It was brilliant. Thank you very much, both of you. I am so proud what both of you have done today. Button, your personalized bell button is switched off.